All right, yeah, here we go. This is chapter two. The first lesson is about if-then statements and their converses. Uh, before we get going, just want you to uh, be aware that, you know, if you see lightning or hear thunder outside, we, we are totally safe where we are here now. There's nothing to worry about. All right, yeah, be safe. So an if-then statement. Got to know about these. It's, it's called a conditional statement or simply called um, conditionals. These are statements that are based on conditions. If something happens, then something else will happen. Um, it's an if-then statement. We talk like this all the time. Uh, the if statement part is called a hypothesis. The letter that we'll, we will use for this, uh, abbreviate for it, is actually P. And then the then statement is called a conclusion. You've heard hy these two words, hypothesis and conclusion, before, I bet. Um, oh. And then the letter we use for conclusion is Q. All right, we talk in uh, if and then statements all the time, hypothesis and conclusions. Um, I would like for you to give one example that may happen to you today or tomorrow. Like, here is mine, and then you make up your own. If I hit a hole in one, then I will be happy. Okay? So um, go ahead, pause real quick and make your own. All right, for me... The I hit a hole in one, that's my if part. If I do that, then the conclusion is I will be happy. Okay? Symbolically, um, the, the letters that we use then is if P, then Q. If the hypothesis, then the conclusion. There are some other forms of this um, here. There's the P implies Q. This would be like I hit a hole in one implies I will be happy, which we really don't talk like that often. I will hit a one. I will hit a hole in one only if I will be happy, which is uh, we really don't talk like that very much either. However, this third one you would hear: I will be happy if I hit a hole in one. The re the order reverses when you have the uh, if there. Notice if it's only if it would it's still hypothesis only if conclusion, but um, if you put the um, conclusion first, there would be an if. The if would be in the middle. A lot like my example right there. So, very simple. I think you won't have a problem with this at all. Um, see if you can identify the hypothesis and conclusion. Like in this example, if it rains, then the game will be canceled. Well, the hypothesis is it rains, and the conclusion is the game will be canceled. In this other example, it says angle A is acute if the measure of angle A is equal to 60 degrees. The hypothesis is the measure angle A equals 60 degrees. This is the conclusion if hypothesis version of it. And then angle A is acute is the, um, the conclusion. So go ahead. I bet you can do this already. See if you can identify the hypothesis and condition, uh, hypothesis and conclusion on these four right here. You can do the single un underline and then double underline like they did. How'd you do? Good, good. I hope so. If you have any questions, mark them. All right, the next piece of this, the next important term is called a converse. It is a conditional that is formed by interchanging the hypothesis and conclusion, where you switch the hypothesis conclusion. The, uh, but a converse is not necessarily true or false. Uh, it's just simply switching them, and then you make the determination. So in my example, I said, if I am happy, then I will hit a hole in one. Is that true? I'm apparently not very happy very often because that's only happened once. Um, so, so no, that's not very true because I've been happy before and I haven't hit a hole in one. Um, what is yours? How does it turn around? Does it? Is it true? Um, it's kind of hard to come up with one that's true both ways. Um, if, um, yeah, I wish it was true. If an if the statement is false, then a counterexample is the example where the hypothesis is true. So, um, but is the hypothesis true, but the conclusion is false. So counterexample is the next term that you absolutely will need to know like, that with this. It's uh, when we talk, this is called a no uh statement. So um, if I'd said, if I'm happy, then I hit a hole in one, you might say, no, uh you were happy the other day, other day and you didn't hit a hole in one. Um, so uh, we'll come up with plenty more examples here as we go. So, 
Here in these examples, you will tell if each statement is true or false, then write the converse and tell whether it is true or false. True or false. If the statement or the converse is false, give a counterexample. All right, so let's look at number five together. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Well, that's true. If two angles are right angles, they're both equal to 90 degrees, and so therefore they're congruent. That's true. What's the converse of this? If two angles are congruent, then they are right angles? Is that true? Well, can you think of an example? Well, no. -uh. If two angles are both equal to 50 degrees, they're congruent, but they're not right angles. That is called a counterexample. They can be less than 90 or greater than 90 and be congruent. All right. If x is greater than 7, that implies that x is greater than 2. So, yeah, that's, that's true. If, um, x, if 9 is greater than 7, that's also greater than 2. So if you flip that around, if x is greater than 2, then x is greater than 7. Well, no, because 3, um, or 4, is greater than 2, but not greater than 7. 4 is the counterexample to this statement, just like this picture here, or saying that, yeah, 50 degrees are two congruent angles, that, um, that those are not right angles. Those are counterexamples. All right, see if you can figure out a counterexample, or see if you can do the same thing for numbers 7 and 8. Um, did you say that the original statement was false on number 7, but then that the um, converse is true? Okay. What about number 8? That's true. If an animal is a penguin, only if it is a bird, that is true. If an animal is a penguin, then it is a bird? Well, that was true. Well, hold on. That animal is a penguin only if it is a bird. That's not true. That would be false. Give me an example of a bird that's not a penguin. Oh, I'm sorry. I've confused myself here. Yes, it is true that an animal is a penguin only if it's a bird. It has to be a bird before it's a penguin. If an animal um, is a bird, then is it a penguin? Is that true? Um, well, no. That would be the... Um, so, yeah, that's the original statement. If an animal is a penguin, then it's a bird. So the converse is, if it is a bird, then it is a penguin, which that's not true. The counterexample of that, can you think of some? I expect that you can. Um, speaking of if-then statements, if you're listening right now, then write the word iffy, like the weather outside right now, um, over to the left of converse at the top of the page. All right, the last term we've had, um, hypothesis, conclusion, converse, counterexample. Now, biconditional is the last one, um, and it contains the words if and only if. This phrase is used when both a conditional and its converse are both true. It's hard to come up with these yourself, but uh, check out this example here. Um, it says line K is a bisector of segment XY if and only if K intersects segment XY at its midpoint. Okay. Is that true both ways? Well, let's see. Um, there's the if and only if. That, that is how you write a biconditional with the phrase in the middle. What this means is if we write it as uh, one way. Line K is a bisector. If line K is a bisector of segment XY, then K intersects segment XY at its midpoint. Uh, that is true. If we flip that around, if line K intersects segment XY at its midpoint, then K is a bisector of segment xy. That's also true, which is why this is a biconditional. It is true both ways. Um, so follow these instructions here. Um, write out some biconditionals and, uh, as, that are the two converses for 9, 10, and 11, and you'll be done. Then I have a challenge for you. I'd like for you to see if you can come up with a biconditional that works both ways. If you can present that, maybe there'll be a prize. All right, get some rest. Got lots going on. Goodbye.